Hi, my name is Josh Sherry. I'll be presenting Recognizing Seatbelt Fastening Behavior with Wearable Technology and Machine Learning. Nearly 1.35 million people are killed in automobile accidents every year, and it remains one of the leading causes of death in the United States. Nearly half of Americans who died in car crashes in 2014 were not wearing a seatbelt at the time of the crash. These stats exist despite the fact that research has shown that seatbelt usage dramatically reduces the risk of fatal and serious injuries from car crashes. There are obviously existing systems within cars that seek to encourage seatbelt use. There's an audible tone and a visual indicator on the dashboard, but these systems are centered around the driver with sensors only in the front seats and warning indicators only visible to the driver. So in this work, we explore a human-centered paradigm for seatbelt monitoring, specifically through the use of active, active recognition and wearable technology. More specifically in this work, we use sensor data from smartwatches recognized the motion of buckling the seatbelt. This is done using activity recognition, which is the recognition of physical activities from sensor data, commonly through machine learning techniques. To our knowledge, the action of buckling a seatbelt has not yet been recognized in literature. For this study, we use a Pebble smartwatch to collect accelerometer data and an Android smartphone to label activities. This watch is no longer commercially available. However, this study is not dependent on a particular smartwatch, rather simply a wrist-worn device that contains an accelerometer. Motion of buckling a seatbelt generally consists of an arm-raising motion followed by an arm-lowering motion. So to ensure we could distinguish in similar motions that would potentially generate false positives in a real-world implementation, we got users to perform gesturally similar activities such as removing something from a shirt pocket, putting a phone in a pants pocket, putting on a backpack, taking off glasses, putting on a jacket, and reaching up and touching one's face or adjusting their hair. We conducted three different studies over the course of this work, a controlled study followed by two in the wild studies, the controlled study consists of users buckling their seatbelt 10 times, then perform each of the controlled actions seven, uh, five times. The in the wild studies were at one and a half hours long, and the goal of these studies was to get ambient data, ensuring that a deployed version of the system would not classify every action user does as one of the actions in the controlled study. Uh, the in the, for the in the wild studies, the users were asked to go out the normal day for the hour and a half, which is buckle their seatbelt 10 times over the course of the hour and a half. Over the course of this work, we had 26 unique participants. The activity of buckling a seatbelt can be broken down into arm raising, grabbing a buckle, and arm lowering, as seen in that image on the screen here. To cover the entirety of the activity, we segmented the data into six second windows and a four second overlap. The data was filtered using a rolling average function to determine the best window size. We trained three classifiers to evaluate performance of different sizes, and found that a window size of two worked the best. From the six second windows, we tracked a set of features. The features were a combination of features used previously in activity recognition literature and based on patterns you observed in the raw data. Each user was extracted four times, one for each of the three sections of the window, and then once for the whole window. So we had a total of 128 features that we extracted from the filtered windowed sensor data. Features on this slide, so average, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, product, correlation, variance, and covariance, are features that all have been used before in prior activity recognition literature. On this slide are the features we derived based on observations made in the data. The first two features here were derived based on observation that certain axes appear very close in value during certain sections of the window. The last two features were derived based on observations that when individuals raised their hand, there was a large gap between X and Y and a small difference between Y and Z. When individuals lowered their hand, there's a small difference between X and Y and a large difference between Y and Z. The performance of the selection on the feature set selected 26 out of 20, 128 features. These are shown on the table on the slide here. So to establish an upper bound of performance, we conducted a stratified cross-validation on this data from the controlled and first in the wild study. This was again done in Weka. You can see the results on the slide here. Since there's such a large class involved in the study, that is most of the time participants weren't and wouldn't be buckling their seatbelt in a real-life situation, we reported F measure as it doesn't take true negatives into account, and therefore is a much clearer indicator of the model's actual performance. So here you can see random forest performed the best, getting an F score of nearly 0.8 on buckling. We then trained models on data from both the control study and the first in the wild study and evaluated on the data from the second in the wild study. As you can see, SMO from the best with an F measure of 0.781. There were some limitations to this study. For one thing, although we collected ambient data during our in the wild studies, these studies were not fully representative of real life usage patterns. In the future, we plan on evaluating and retraining our algorithms on data for representative of more natural driving habits. Our studies also had users wear a smartwatch on the hand they used to buckle their seatbelt with, which may not always be uh, hand they naturally wear a watch on. There are a few potential solutions to this issue. One would be to look at data from the offhand and see how that moves during the action of buckling the seatbelts. Other solutions could also look at hardware, hardware options, for example, using a fitness band that can be practically worn on either wrist uh, comfortably. In addition to these future studies, future work should also look at tracking the activity over time and how interfaces that leverage this uh, intelligent look and function. Such assistance can be made not only for drivers, but also family members, such as parents and student drivers, or even for insurance companies to reward drivers who practice safe driving techniques. Thank you.